You're listening to Mammal Watching with Charles Foley and John Hall. You can find other episodes at mammalwatching.com slash podcast. I've been doing field research for a number of years, and some of it had been on birds, and I decided I wanted to really focus on mammals. So I narrowed it down, because I'm a field guide junkie, to two choices, the aquatic genet of the Congo in Africa and the woolly flying squirrel. Because again, I was looking for an animal that really needed someone to work on their behalf, um, something that was probably in danger in some form or fashion, uh, but nobody really knew much about. I didn't go, want to go work on tigers like everybody else did. Yeah. Um, something new and different. And I'd been in the tropics. I'd worked on Watsons, which is a very strange punk rock-like bird in Venezuela. And I, I sweat a lot. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go to the dry Himalayas of Pakistan and find this woolly flying squirrel. I, I very luckily didn't realize that most scientists thought it was extinct. It, as you mentioned, hadn't been seen for roughly 70 years. And I went over there and did a, a survey for them and trapping sort of everything that you might be able to get uh, in the region, baby red foxes and stone martens and all kinds of really interesting wildlife, but no woolly flying squirrels. But I also discovered that it was a place where there could literally be a hundred flying squirrels right above my head on a cliff face, just having a great big party and I'd never know it. So we went up into the hills and caught a bunch of animals that weren't squirrels. And eventually a big fellow, um, a local fellow with a big beard and, and the shalwar kamis and a Kalashnikov on his back came into our camp and said, I hear you are looking for Shergi. And I said, yes. And he said, you will give me money if I find one. I said, okay, you've, you've got the gun. And he said, uh, give me that bag, the bag of potatoes, I think that was uh, nearby. And so I emptied out the potatoes and gave him the bag. And he went away. And six hours later, he came back with a woolly flying squirrel in the bag. I knew I wasn't going to have a successful conservation program based on, on a squirrel. That's just not going to work. But as you mentioned, there is another animal in this area called the markhor, in this case, the flare horned markhor, which is a subspecies. It has these enormous, as you mentioned, spiral antler or horns, um, very much like the greater kudu, if you know that animal from Africa. Um, and these are enormous goats, uh, great long beards, incredible climbers. Um, they can go up the sides of what really looks like sheer cliffs. And I've seen them in oak trees actually up in the trees, feeding on leaves. <clears throat> so I, yeah. Spectacular animals. Um, and I thought, that's the ticket. It's the national mammal of Pakistan. So it has a lot of credit um, across the country. If you'd like to listen to the full episode, then visit mammalwatching.com slash podcast.